And welcome back to more Super Paper Mario. So last time we started the Flop Side Pit Hunter Trials, aka the long one. Well, the harder one, I guess. We have a hundred more floors of now dark variations of all the enemies we fought to get here. Which is pretty neat, but also it's just more battling. At least the combat's fast in this game. I mean, I think I talked about this in the last Pit of Hunter Trials, but in the flip side pit, I mean, I did talk about the fact that, you know, you actually do save a lot of time just by the fact that you are doing real time battles. You know, a lot of people don't like the real time battles. I'm actually okay with them. Again, maybe it's just. Like, I don't know why I'm okay with them as a thing, because... I feel like a lot of people who went into this game were disappointed at the change in style. And I completely respect that decision, but like... I went into this game being super hyped for anything. Uh, I went in being extremely easygoing, to tell the truth. I just wanted more Paper Mario, that's it. I wanted it to be a good game, and I thought this was a good game, so like, hey. I got what I wanted. Other people wanted a more traditional game, and frankly, we still haven't gotten a traditional Paper Mario, so that is disappointing. People also argue though that what is a traditional Paper Mario, considering how, you know, more games use gimmicks than uh, the actual traditional formula at this point. So what does make a traditional Paper Mario when you have two classics, or what fans call classic? One super and then two uh, color splash type games. I say color splash instead of sicker star for the obvious reasons. I'll actually argue that color splash is a good game. It just overstays its welcome. Uh, it's like fun, but it kind of runs its course about you know five hours before the end. Kind of runs out of ideas. But this isn't a uh, Color Splash playthrough, so more on that later in the future. <laughs> I'm not promising anything, because last time I promised this game, it took an entire year and a half to actually get this playthrough. So I'm not promising uh, Color Splash anytime soon, for the record. But I'll most likely play it sometime in the future. The Boombox enemies are actually some of my least favorite fight. Because they just seem really annoying to deal with. And these are the enemies that split up, which is really awkward when you can't tell which one is actually the real one. Apparently that was the real one. So yeah, we have Floor of Sapiens, we have the King. I do love the art direction in these dungeons because it's very stylistic, but it still gets the point across. Like you know exactly which chapter this is a reference to, even though it's very stylized. And I think it's a very nice art direction. We're kind of far away to a level up, and I'm getting a little concerned. Uh, we're gonna do a different strat for these guys. We're gonna use Barry because you can do that. It's a little bit of a safer strategy, but also a little slow. Luckily, I didn't have to fight too many of those guys. As I, I say, this is one is guarding the entrance, but luckily we can stay in 3D for this. I actually find the 3D, uh, 2D gimmick kind of clever. Like, I feel like it's implemented in a way that doesn't feel intrusive to me. It feels like it just, just flows nicely with the style of the game presented. That's just me. Okay, I'm confused because... Oh. Okay. I don't know why I didn't see the key earlier. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there because I could have sworn the key didn't drop, but then I find the key. You can do the same thing with these enemies, you can stun them with your own projectiles. Or just run into them, that works too. 
Yeah, this is actually it. This is the last main uh, side thing. The only other side things are completing the recipes and the card list, which... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not doing that in the near future. I might, again, do a video covering it way down the road, but for now, uh, don't count on it. Because, quite frankly, we're at almost episode 70. I think we have basically gotten as much out of this game as we can without excessive farming. Even the maps are a little bit bad for that, uh, in all fairness. Oh, that is a bad enemy up there. It's like a gigabyte of the dark, which is going to be ugly to deal with. It's probably the one with the key too, because he's the worst enemy in the room. If he doesn't have the key, I'll actually be happy, because, yeah, he gets pretty hard. Swing back, please. No, <laughs> this. But hey, that worked. So I have to kind of lure him down, I think. Like that. Okay. Uh... Hmm. How to deal with him? Rather slippery at the moment. Okay, I clipped him to the wall. Uh, cool. But again, you can have 3D powers. That's probably what happened with the enemy in the last floor. I probably just got clipped into the block and I just didn't see it. It should be floor 30, right? Or floor 40. It should be Bombette. Yep, it is indeed Bombette. Just making sure the guy isn't in the room. To give us lovely and wonderful items. Keep us strikers. <laughs> Took out a shell. Okay, so we got the key first try, so now we just need to find the exit. Okay, that was really easy. <laughs> I didn't think it would be that simple, to tell the truth. This room seems quiet, and that's why I was concerned. <laughs> Shlurps are still the worst enemy uh, in this entire section because of just how long each one takes to take out. Again, if you get lucky, they're not actually not that bad, but normally I don't get that good of luck. Back to Barry, so we can avoid, or we can just sneak up on this guy. That works too. Oh shoot, that's awkward placement of enemies. Oh wow, we're almost dying. That's not good. That's really not good. We're Twenty thousand points away. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna wait till the last minute, because we have live streams. So I'm gonna take my chances and hope for the best. Could be a, a horrible mistake, but I'm going to try to play a little risky here. These enemies tend to kind of stay on the ground a little bit before they start bouncing again. So I'm kind of exploiting that fact in order to get safe hits in. So wait until they actually jump and then try to attack. 15,000 points. We might be okay. We might not be. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a little risky. Not healing. But again, we have live streams, so what's the worst that can happen, right? Boomer. We're using a lot of pixels, and that is one thing I like about these uh, dungeons, is they do tend to force a lot of unique uh, pixel usage. Let's get to this side of them. But again, if you don't get the key first try, then it becomes a <laughs> painful exercise of trial and error, so that's the one downside. 
Oh my god, Hammer Bros. There's like no easy way to... Oh. Or we can get the key for his try, that works too. I'm gonna actually do this on purpose. Drop the key down, basically. I did not mean to use Boomer, but that worked. Uh... I was hoping for another healing item, but alas, we did not get that. It's just, I know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna use a healing item, and then I'm immediately gonna get a level up. And that's just a waste of resources. When we don't have a ton of resources to spare, so... That's why I'm trying to be a little frugal, even if it's... Extremely risky. Ha, huh, that worked. We only need 8,000 more points, but we only have 4 HP. So we're playing da a dangerous game here. Hey, it makes things, things a lot more interesting, huh? Hey, fire burst. Holy cow, this give 1,200 points? Well, I take it back then. We're actually super close to a level up if everything is going to give us that much experience. Yeah, not everything will. Cheap magic groupers are not, a little bit stressful because they can actually snipe you super easily. Ah, why the heck not? Let's see if we can catch this guy. I don't know what determines how easy enemies are to catch, actually. Also, I think he just damaged himself <laughs> by he's kicking his shell right up against the wall where he was. And here we are, room 50! Uh, Paracarry. Oh, thank goodness, it's Flim. Uh, oh. Look at that. We are literally one coin short. I'm actually a little bit upset by that. <laughs> I'm a tad triggered by that. Uh, literally, I needed one more coin for an Ultra Shroom. That is insane luck. Oh well, let's move on. So now, Samurai's Kingdom. Must. Not. Oh. Well, good thing I just bought a life stream, right? These guys have like a bajillion health, so I'm actually gonna change strategies here. Can you just kinda get up against a wall where you can just kinda comp with them? Again, luckily it ends up being first try, so I uh, don't have to fight too many, hopefully. Maybe there's only one here, actually. I don't see any more enemies here. Again, Bowser is your, uh... best bet there, I assume. Okay, this Chain Chomp's a jerk. Cause he is, like, ledge hogging, <laughs> like, mad. It's funny, I use terms like ledge hogging, yeah, I don't even like Smash Bros. <laughs> that much. I play Smash Bros. exceedingly casually, so uh, if you're wondering why I don't play Smash Bros. much for like videos or anything, that's why, because I am kind of a, a casual. I like the fan service, I like all the different characters, moves, I don't really like the competitive scene, I don't get into that. Partly just because I kind of don't understand how competitive stuff works. Like all the crazy wave dashing and melee, as an example, I, I, that kind of goes over my head a little bit. So many little piggy enemies. Uh, which one has the key? Hammer just a fraction of a second too soon, I feel. It's probably like 140,000. Not even. We're actually over a million points, I think. Total, I mean. Ow. <laughs> that was unfortunately timed. Okay, 
Okay. Boomerang Bros. If you hit him fast enough, you might not be able to throw their boomerang. Ah, oh, shoot. Jump backwards. That was really bad. Hey, stop that, please. Okay, boom, uh, Barry does not really help here, uh, I've discovered, so let's use Bowser if you ever see more of them. Actually, no, I'm being dumb. I'm being extremely dumb. We could use Peach. <laughs> she has invincibility. Why didn't I think of that sooner? I have no idea. If we ever get really desperate for HP, we could always just use Peach Umbrella Strats. It's delayed inevitable. I play super safe. Yeah, I think Peach is actually going to be our friend here. Because uh, we're taking a considerable amount of damage. This will be the first try. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. Off screen hammer burst right there. You can just attack them initially, then they're actually pretty easy to deal with. Just getting close enough to them is the problem. We're already in the low health range. Uh Okay. We're fine. <laughs> We're all fine here. So far, no problems. No deaths yet, except the one life stream. Actually, I think that is literally the only time we've actually used a life stream so far. Uh, so that's pretty crazy, actually. Well, this is an awkward floor to be on. Uh, so yeah, let's try that peach strat I was talking about. Oh, well, this is a really weird way to do this floor, but it's, act it's actually working. Okay, tried to clear the shell, not super successful there. Uh, I feel like I'm being really quiet this video, and it's partly concentration. <laughs> like, this is actually kind of stressful. <laughs> not kind of around here. This is actually a little bit intense. But looky here, we made it over halfway. Bow. No phlegm. So no phlegm. Uh, crud. <laughs> now we have a ways to go to another level, so we're gonna use this. And in any case, we're actually gonna stop here for now, so thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Super Paper Mario.